question. A lot of people ask this. You know, they got cold hearts. Is what I feel in my heart, does that make me God's people? You can't tell me what I feel in my heart's wrong. It's all about my heart. Well, that's not all it's about. Hebrews 8.10. We're going to read that verse in just a second. You know, we've heard so many make this statement. But now I want to look at the verse. For this is the covenant that I, that's Jesus, will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. But I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. So maybe all it is is just written on your heart. I will be their God and they shall be my people. In other words, what I feel in my heart, is that good enough? Does it actually have to go by Scripture? Can I come up with my own feelings? That way you couldn't tell me what's what I've got in my heart's wrong at all. Could that be? What I have in my heart makes it right. The new covenant would be written in the hearts of people. How? By putting His laws into their minds and on their hearts. God was not telling us to memorize the new covenant. Although it certainly would be beneficial. But even if you could read the whole Bible without looking at the Bible, just stand up here and be an orator and tell us every word it says, that don't guarantee you that you're going to obey what it says. I know people that don't believe in God, they're called atheists, that memorize more scriptures than I could by far. Just because you memorize scriptures... You've got them in your minds. You don't have them in your heart. There's a difference. You've got to have them both. Putting it into our hearts seems to mean, in effect, having a new disposition of heart. I said this in our Sunday school class this morning. I think it's a good example, so I'll say it now. If you are here this morning because you're, you have to be, well, I'm supposed to be, I know I ought to be. I hope you uh, grow while you're here from the Word of God. I hope that's not the only reason you're here. I hope it's because you love God, you love His Word, you love the idea of going to heaven, you love the idea of being able to help others get to heaven. It's all about love, but loving the truth. Is taught in God's Word. It's a new disposition of the heart. If you're here and your heart's not here and you're thinking about where you're going to eat, let me go ahead and kill that for you right now. Right back there will be the best cooking in Tennessee in just, just a few minutes. So just stick around. One who has God's laws in our hearts and delights in them, Psalms 1, 1 through 3. One who has God's laws in his hearts and delights in them. I study God's Word. I study till I understand it. I don't just know what it says. I know why it says it. I know what I can get from it. I'm now delighted in the Word of God. We're delighted, those of us that have been baptized into the body of Christ, because we know the Scripture tells us that. We know if we walk in the light, Romans 8, 1 and 2, 1 John, verse 7 through 9, that we will go to heaven once we become Christians. We delight in that. And wants to obey them. He loves the will of God. He loves the will of God. Why are we here this morning, family? Because we love God. We love His Word. We love each other. And we love the idea of spending eternity together. Isn't it wonderful? How can we put God's laws in our minds and in our hearts? Some would say, well, he talked to me last night. Well, he's not a respecter of persons. He didn't talk to you last night. Unless you open his book up and let him talk to you. God talks to you through his word all the time if you let him. Some people do, some people don't. With the old covenant, a child was taught to know the covenant and to know God. Now, that's an understatement. If you lived in the old law, you study this, you put your finger in your children's face or in a new, a new Christian or a new follower of God, and you say, hey, 
You will do this. You will do that. You don't have a choice. You understand? It's a must. We don't need to have that attitude today alone. We must do what the Bible says. We have to worship in spirit and in truth. But I believe by the end of this lesson, God will tell us exactly what He means fully in that statement. To worship in spirit and in truth. Some of God's people never took to heart His teachings. Paul urged the Philippians, Philippi, to develop and have this attitude. The mind of Christ in you. The mind of Christ in me. What do you mean? I mean, I've got to study His Word. Yes, to make yourself a perfect man of God. 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17. Study, rightly divide it. 2 Timothy 2, 15. And all that. Yes, we want you to read the Bible, study it. But listen, with all that, learn to love God's Word. Love to the mind of Christ. I'm striving and I'm trying, brothers. I love everybody in this building. I love you so. Some of you I don't know very well at all. But I love you all. But for me to show how much I love you, by taking one of my precious children that God has blessed me with, one of my precious grandchildren or my great-grandchildren, and sacrifice them in a very awesome, terrible death to save your life. I can't lie. I don't know that I could do that. I just don't know that I could do that. God never hesitated. He never hesitated. And His child never hesitated. If that's not love, I don't know what is. If that's not love, I don't know what is. The mind of Christ is having love in my heart, love in my mind, and I put that in my life. And if I don't, i got a problem and I need to go to my knees and I pray to God for help. Please, God, help me. I've got, I've got to grow in love. Because of our new disposition under the new covenant, we want, we want to obey it. Why are you here this morning? Well, I want to be here. What do you mean why I'm here? No, you have to be here. Well, I'm supposed to be here because... You know, I want to come and stir up good works, Hebrews 10, 24, with my brethren. And, and I, don't want to, I don't want to fake the forsake to assemble, uh, to, to assemble together, even like last night. You know, I want to be here every chance I get or be wherever they're at. You know, it's because I want to. I want to do what God wants me to. As a matter of fact, I love God because, well, He first loved me. It is all about love. It really is. As we obey, it grows more precious to us. The love of God. To be a mature Christian, a mature Christian, you, you obey out of love. Not just because the Bible says so. When we gather around the Lord's table this morning, I hope and pray that nobody here that partakes of it is thinking about where you're going to go, what you're going to do today, that's the time you center your heart, mind, and soul on what God did for us and what Jesus Christ did and what this Lord's table represents. That bread that represents His body that was beaten so badly and then hung on a cross by nails and He died. And I can see Him looking at me through time because He knew me and you both through time. And he said, this is for you because I love you. When we partake of that table, let's have love in our hearts. Let's have appreciation like nobody's ever seen. A mature Christian obeys out of love, not because he has to. And this love is implanted in our hearts. The Word of God is implanted in here. It's implanted. We want our children to obey us, don't we? I want my children to do what I tell them to do. Of course, they won't now. Most of them are, have been grown and already got grandchildren. But the thing is, I want them to obey me even today a little bit. Why? Because I think I can still whoop them. No. Because they know I love them. And I would pray they still love me. You know, take love out of the picture. What kind of family you got? Hurt feelings. What you got? 
They're not afraid of me anymore. You say, oh, be. But the truth is, it's all about love. And my Father in heaven, yeah, I think he could probably whip me, don't you? But I want to obey his word because I love him. I want to partake of the Lord's table because I love my Savior. I am so thrilled to go to prayer through Jesus Christ to the throne of God Almighty. How much love can you show me? It's all about love, folks. The concept of new love is found in Ezekiel 11, 19 and 20. Then I will give them one heart, and I will put a new spirit within them, and take the stony heart out of their flesh, and give them a heart, a heart of flesh. You know, I'm preaching the Word of God this morning because I love God. And you know what? I love you. I'm going to get in trouble about what I'm fixing to say. The second sermon this morning is also on PowerPoint because they got out of bed at 4.30 this morning to do it. And you know what I think? I think she did it because she might love somebody in here. Just guessing. Just guessing. Again, how do we get this new heart and mind? Hebrews 4.12 For the Word of God is living and powerful. The Word of God is so powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even the division of the soul and spirit within me and of the joints and the marble. This Word will rip your heart out. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and an intense of my heart. I cannot worship God in truth and satisfy Him. I cannot worship God with a happy, happy heart and spirit and not have truth and worship Him. I have to have both. I have to have the ground, the foundation of the truth that is inspired by my love, my spirit. And that's what we all need to strive for. This is connection with the return of the Jews from the Babylonian captivity. You ready? Israel had promised to keep the law, Exodus 24, 7. We'll do it because we have to. But they did not exercise the moral power of the heart to match their good intentions. Their heart wasn't in it. You know, I ran a lot of businesses, dealerships, when I was younger. And I was taught this from a very, very young manager. That if I put the fear of these people that work under me, that are my iron hand, when I walk out the door, they sit down. But if they obeyed me because they knew I cared for them, I cared about them and their families, and I wanted them all to be able to provide for their families. When I left and came back, they usually did more than they did when I was there. Man, I'll tell you something, love's strong. These people, they did what they were supposed to, up to a point, but their heart wasn't in it. There was a prevailing weakness in the flesh, Romans 8, 3. How many times have I heard I go to church where I'm comfortable. Yeah, but the Bible, I don't care what the Bible says. I'm comfortable. Besides that, it's a big congregation. I like big, boy. Well, there ain't nothing wrong with a big congregation. Nothing. I've been to several of them, obviously. I was an elder over one. But you know what? God don't have anything in this Bible that I've found on how many has got to be there to be saved. How many's got to be there to be faithful? How many's got to be there to go to heaven? Small, large, or indifferent, it don't matter. But I can't just go because I'm comfortable there. You know, if I wanted to be comfortable, I'd bring my chair that I watch TV in every day that they fusses at me a hundred times a day to get out of it. And I'd put it right there. Well, that should be true if it's all based on the Word of God. And I'm comfortable if you're, if you're opening up God's Word and you're showing me what God's Word says, I'm comfortable. Even though you got me sitting over here like they did in India on concrete floors. 
what we can learn a lot from you guys. Ezekiel 11, 20. That they may walk in my statues and keep my judgments and do them. Okay, we want to do them. And then they shall be my people and I will be their God. This is where we have reached full obedience. We have got our heart into it. We're studying God's Word. We are abiding by God's Word. I'm not adding or taking anything away. I'm not going beyond what's what I think. I'm not going beyond what's written. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, don't go beyond what is written. Just go by the Word of God. It's written once and for all. Jude 3. We're done. As long as we do that, and we got our heart into it, then we've reached full obedience. Take one out of the picture, you're not there. Yes, we're supposed to go only by the Word of God and have obedient faith, but we've got to match our knowledge, our learning, and what we do from in here. When we sang a song all ago, we got half as many today as we had last. Of course, half the church. You said we didn't name them all off. One of our song leaders is not here either. I mean, we've got a bunch of sick people, and as a virus going around, it's terrible. Maybe a pandemic, and it's called the creeping crud. So be careful. Watch for it. But you know, we come together, and when y'all sing, you were singing from your hearts. Well, he can't sing. I don't. I didn't read that in here where you have to be able to sing good to sing, did you? Who made your voice? Who made your instrument? Who made your heart? Who are you singing to and why are you singing? Well, I'm teaching and, and, and admonishing or warning my brothers and sisters. And who are you giving glory to? God Almighty. Let her rip, buddy. Let her rip. Jesus sought on the Sermon on the Mount to provide his disciples with a proper understanding of God's intent in the old covenant. Their righteousness was to exceed the outward. Well, you look like a Christian. You know, I've said that to several of y'all. Man, you look like a preacher today. I haven't said that to you women, but I've said it to the men. Yeah, well, you look like a preacher today. You know what? You can look like a Christian. You can... You can sort of act like one. You can play church. You can even show up here. But if you ain't got your heart and the truth in it, you just play in church. The righteousness was to exceed the outward formal righteousness of the scribes and the Pharisees in order for them to enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 5.20 That wasn't me talking. That was me reading the verse. In our hearts means more than just internalizing the law. I remember, I know what it says. Well, that's great. But if you got to hear, have you grasped it? Even though King David had put God's law in his heart, Psalms 119.11, he still failed to keep it perfectly. You know, a lot of people have asked, how could King David be so awful and he be a man after God's own heart? He messed up. Awful. But you know the wonderful thing about him being in there? He loved God. And he repented. And then he became a man after God's own heart. Aren't you glad King David's in the Bible? The power comes through a full commitment in one's heart to obey God's new covenant. You know, just as an infant, we've got a seven and a half month old at our house right now. And when she cries, first thing you grab is what? The bottle. She's hungry. She's hangry. I mean, when she gets hungry, she's angry. She wants the milk. And we need to be the same way when it comes to our salvation from 1 Peter 2, 1 through 2. We need to want to hear God's Word. Every chance we get, we need to want to hear God's Word. We want to study God's Word. We want to read God. We want to hear God's Word. It's all about doing what God wants me to. Why? Because I have to. No, because I want to. I love to. I love God. I love His Word. A greater measure of that power can be developed by longing for the Word. 
longing for the Word. Under the New Covenant, we can approach Him directly, for we are His people. We talked about this in class. He is our God. Uh, under the old law, there was a virtual class system. A class system where the priest, the high priest, were counted far above common people. He's the only one that could go behind the veil of the most holy of holies and there make our sacrifice for our sins that year that we rolled forward and never got forgiveness for till the cross. We had to do it every year after year. And we weren't even able to go there. Now all citizens of God's kingdom, all citizens of God's kingdom, if you've been baptized into the body of Christ, You've been added to the church for the Lord Himself, Acts 2 47, not by men voting you in or out. And you're walking in the life. You know what? You're a citizen of God's kingdom. And you're equal to new to Old Testament priests. Well, I don't feel like I am. Well, I know. See, they were just men too. And we're just men and women today. You know, we're just all common people. But we're Christians. We're children of God. He says, And they shall be my people, rejecting his requirements or failing to keep them. One of the two. It was equated with not knowing God in Judges 2.10. They lived a sinful lifestyle. It is described as not having learned Christ adequately. Preacher, I keep having the same temptation. I keep falling in the same... I keep committing the same sin. Oh, you haven't learned about Christ adequately. you got to study more. you got to hear more. you got to try to apply more. you got to, most of all, try to understand what He's really saying. And you want to do all that till you get to a point where you love God. You finally realize he, how much He loves you. How much He still loves you. How much... That He loves you that He puts up with all your weakness and sin and everything, hoping one day you'll come to repentance a thousand times a thousand times a thousand times a thousand times if you've got a sincere heart. Ephesians 4, 20 through 24. But you have not so learned Christ, if indeed you have heard Him and have been taught by Him, as the truth is in Jesus that you put off concerning your formal conduct. The old man who grows corrupt according to deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. I've got to put him behind me. When I came up out of the watery grave of baptism, yes, I was a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. But the thing is, I still had the same human part of me. I still had the same temptations, the same anger, all these things that I had to control. And it didn't just happen overnight. I had to grow. I had to grow. What helps us grow, brothers and sisters? Love is the fertilizer. It will help you grow quicker than anything. True love for God and His Word. It was the obligation of the Ephesians to change their own hearts. If they had rightly understood and applied what they had learned about Christ, they would have had a renewed spirit of mind. Ephesians 4.23 It's not just about showing up. If one loves God in his heart, he will not want to offend him by sinning. If you truly love someone with all your heart, are you going to try to do something to just make them mad and irritate them? Are you going to try to do something so they'll be so disappointed in you it just brings them to tears? I think not. If we really love God, we don't want to offend Him. The Spirit does not overrule human response. You know, when I hear the gospel, I hear something or I read something, or like after a while they have an invitation, the Holy Spirit's not going to make me do anything. If I want to go to hell, I go to hell. You can't stop me. 
The Holy Spirit probably <coughs> could, but he won't. Oh, the devil would love to help me, but all he can do is tempt me. It's all up to me. Neither does God use coercive action on any of us. It is up to us what we will do now and for eternity. There are those precious souls that have learned the scriptures in their minds and can spot a mistake when you're talking or teaching or preaching quicker than anybody. Ah, got you! In fact, they can see a, a mistake a mile away. But they can't see this huge wall that's in front of them. You ever seen it? My mother used to tell me you can't see the forest for the trees. The wall represents they're not understanding the word in my little analogy here. It has to be in our heart. And having love and all this in our heart is very unfamiliar even to Christians a lot of times today. It really is. It's all about love. Write them on their hearts means this. To make God's will the very center of our lives and fill our hearts with love, we then worship in love. Do you love God? When you sing, are you singing loving to sing to God, loving to praise God? Or are you sitting there thinking, hey, he can't sing, I can't sing? That's not what's supposed to be going on, folks. We need to show our love to God by singing to Him. And if you don't like that, you definitely don't want to go to heaven because what I read, you're going to be singing all the time up there. We pray in love. Boy, that's where that fervent heart comes in, a fervent prayer. And we've seen with our own eyes in this small congregation how powerful how powerful prayer is. I could look around and see people here that, you know, one time or another, we weren't sure they'd be here any longer. Several. Still here, aren't they? Well, they're lucky. No, no, I don't, I don't think so. Prayer. Prayer. And you can serve God from your heart. You don't serve to get the honor from men. You serve to get the honor from God. His word ought to make the honor in her heart. This verse, John 4, 24. It says to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Let us not only halfway worship with truth alone. Let us worship from our hearts. Let us do everything with love in it. God is spirit, not of this world, and we need to emotionally from our hearts, worship Him with all of our spirit and truth. Both. I'm worshiping God. I do what He says to do in here. Yeah, but you're mad, you're angry, you're what's wrong with you? This other man says, Oh, I love God. What are you doing? Well, I'm doing what I think's best. Neither one of those will work. It takes both in spirit, my heart, and in truth. They were speeding through a school zone. Little old child walks out in front of us. And you kill it. You kill it. Now, this is from my own mind. Because I have a hard time saying, I see what speed limit is. It looks safe. I don't see it matter anymore. If I ever hit a child, speed limit is 20. And I hit it in the speed zone. Just darted out because of the little kids, you know. Oh. I think that uh, that 20 mile an hour speed zone would be in my mind and in my heart, don't you? Does it always take something like facing death's door to get some people to understand the love part of this, not just the word part of this? Oh, uh, there's a problem with people understanding and going by the word and the word only. But it's not just about that. It's got to have love. And it's got to be written on our hearts. Yes, I believe that people are right. You can't tell me what's in my heart is wrong or right. All I can do is tell you what God says. And I'll tell you by reading the verses, and if I tell you something, I can't back it up with book, chapter, and verse. You need to get away from me. I'll get away from you too. 
folks, I love you. I know you love each other. I hope you love me. But I can guarantee you one thing. God loves every one of us the same. He loves us with all his heart. And I don't want to do anything to not please God. The decision that any of us makes right now, like every other decision we make, would be remembered all through eternity. If you have not been baptized into the body of Christ for their mission of your sins, Acts 2.38, if you've not been added to the church after that by the Lord Himself, if you weren't baptized into the body of Christ, the kingdom of Christ, the church of Christ, as taught in Colossians 1, 13 and 18, then you might think about doing that if you love God and you love God's Word. And if you've done all that, you need to change something in your life and you got enough love in your heart, then and then only can you overcome fear of being embarrassed. Can you imagine how many people will be in the wrong place in eternity because they were fear of having to stand up and say, I was wrong about something? happens all the time. You have a need come forward as we stand and sing.